Welcome to How To Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making a cake that looks like a bucket of Play-Doh and inside it has a rainbow of jelly or jello cake layered together with yummy Italian meringue. Firstly you need to make a double batch of my fluffy sponge cake recipe and there's a video on how to make that on the recipe post on howtocookthat.net and all the other information you need to make this cake is there too. If you don't have a cake leveller then you can just rest your knife on something the right height like a container lid and hold it flat on that and then run the knife around the cake. So that way you get an exactly straight cut and two even layers. And then do the same on the top half just to neaten off that top layer. Cover a baking tin with plastic wrap and place one half of your cake inside. Make up the first packet of jello or jelly depending where you live in the world using the directions on the packet but only fill it up to 70% of the total water that it says to use. Then pour that over your cake letting it soak in and then place it in the fridge to set and this makes a really moist delicious yummy cake. Repeat that with the orange jelly and then the lemon and I'm using all my different cake tin sizes for this. You could use deep plastic plates instead if you don't have this many cake tins. Then a layer of strawberry, raspberry, black currant, and all the flavors of your choice. I tried to choose a rainbow of colors. While that's setting, place your white chocolate into a bowl and melt that. If you're using real chocolate that contains cocoa butter, you have to temper it or it won't set properly. And I'll link you to that video on the blog post as well. Add in some yellow candy or oil-based food coloring. If you use liquid food color or gel food colors, you're gonna seize your chocolate and it will go all thick and weird and we don't want that. Pour the chocolate into your bucket and then tip it to spread it over the side. I bought this bucket new and then I washed it. And remember though, you have to make sure your bucket is completely dry because you don't want any water on your chocolate or yes, it will seize. Keep turning and allow the excess to tip into a bowl and then place that in the fridge to set. Once it is set, we wanna give it a second coat. And this will set fairly quickly because the first layer of chocolate is cold. So you'll need to spread it up the sides using a spatula. Then leave that upside down on some baking paper to set so that the top edge doesn't go too thin. To make our Italian meringue frosting, you need egg whites, sugar, water, and cream of tartar. Add that cream of tartar to the whites and the water to the sugar. I really like the taste of Italian meringue. This is one of my favorite frostings. Place the sugar and water over high heat and add a candy thermometer to the side of the pan. Whip your egg whites to soft peaks. So just leave it going for a little while and then turn it off while you wait for your sugar. Using a pastry brush dipped in water, brush down the sides of your pan to get rid of any sugar crystals off the edge because they'll make it gritty and grainy in your frosting instead of smooth. Once the sugar syrup reaches 238F or 114C, take it off the heat and pour it into the egg whites with the mixers running. It will increase in volume, but you want to keep it whipping until the bowl has cooled down. By now your chocolate should be set. And if you find it hard to get out of the bucket, just place it in the freezer for 10 minutes and it will shrink away from the plastic. The bottom of our bucket is narrower than the top. So we're gonna to need to trim the first layer smaller. If you don't have a cutter like this, you could just use a plate and cut around it with a knife instead. Pipe some Italian meringue down the bottom. It doesn't need to be pretty, it's just wanting to cover the bottom of the bucket. And then add your first layer of jelly cake, pressing it down firmly. Add more Italian meringue and layer up the different colors of cake all the way up to the top of your bucket, finishing off with more Italian meringue. Now for the lid, I'm gonna make it blue. You can make it whatever color you like. And this time I'm using powdered food coloring. And again, remember not to use liquid or it will seize the chocolate. 
Mix the powder with a small amount of the chocolate until the color is all even and then add that back into the rest of the chocolate. I find if you just put the powder in the big amount of chocolate you end up with little tiny specks of color rather than it being mixed in really well. And just quickly I'll show you what happens if you use gel color or liquid color as you mix it through the chocolate. See how that chocolate's gone thick and it's no good to use now? That's why you need to use either powdered or oil based candy colors. Pour the blue chocolate onto some baking paper and then spread it using a spatula to make it roughly the right sized circle to cover the top of the cake. Now all Play-Doh lids have an indent in the middle, so add a baking tin on top and push it down slightly. You could use the bottom of your bucket here if you wanted instead. And once it is starting to set, use a knife to trim around the edge, leaving a border so that the lid is bigger than the bucket. Then place that in the fridge to set firmly. To make the logo for the front, roll out some red fondant and cut around the Play-Doh logo. And I'll put one this size on the recipe post for you so you can just print that out and cut around it. Remove the excess and smooth out the edges just using your finger. Then use a fondant extruder or you can roll out a thin snake of white fondant. If you add a little bit of water around it, it'll help it stick into place and just use a knife and your fingers just to get it in all those curves there and get it nice and tight all the way around. Do the same with a thinner snake of bright blue fondant. To make the letters, just place some baking paper over the logo and use a thick snake of white to form the letter, just molding it and shaping it into the shape of what you can see underneath. And keep going until you've written all your letters, Play-Doh, fun to play with, but not to eat, except for today. <laughs> Add a little water to the red and then add each of your letters into place. I find it best to look at the spaces around the letters on your logo so that then you can see where they should go. Look at how much red there is between it and the top border so that you can get it in just the right place. Dampen the front of your bucket and add the logo into place in the middle. Now my blue line came loose as I picked it up so I'd suggest when you make it to add that bit once it's on the bucket which is what I'm doing now. Lift the cake tin off the chocolate and add your lid on top of the bucket pushing it down slightly. Then add some small lumps of fondant along the front of the bucket so the kids have some to play with. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more cakes, chocolate and desserts. Click here for the recipe, here for my YouTube channel and here for last week's chocolate spiral dessert video. Champion of the week goes to all you lovely people who put me in your seven favourite YouTubers list on Twitter and made my notifications go crazy. I'm sending big hugs to you all. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.